Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show podcast with astrologer Shelley Overton. Hello and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show for June 3rd, 2020. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I want to welcome you to the podcast. This is actually the second attempt. I wasn't really pleased with the first one, so we're going to try it again. You can see I've got some charts over here on the computer, and um, we're going to really go through what's coming up this week and what's been going on recently. Of course, we had a lot of energy going on this week. Today is Wednesday, and you know we had a lot of um, upheaval going on between the people who are demonstrating. We've got rioters. We've got a president who is exacerbating what's going on, and we've got police. So. It's kind of a perfect mix, uh, usually for Mars in Aries, but that's not the case now. We have Mars in Pisces. And so it makes you kind of wonder, well, you know, we know Mars in Aries is going to be a really difficult energy coming up here at the beginning of July, really technically the last couple of days of June. But uh, having what's going on now kind of makes you go, well, what's going on in the sky? And I'll tell you what's going on in the sky. We've got Mars conjunct Neptune and Sun is next to Venus at 13 Gemini in a square to a 14 degree Mars in Pisces. So that is a direct uh, 90 degree angle. And we've also got the ruler of Gemini in the sign of Cancer. That adds an added uh, sentimentality around um, what's going on around family and how we can protect our families. Um, I don't, you know, I recorded this earlier and I didn't express things really as succinctly as I wanted to. So I'm going to just say now that my heart goes out to the world and black people all over the world. I would say African Americans, but this is a global shift. This is black people everywhere in the world. It's not just here in America. And there are demonstrations going on all over the world. We've got people peacefully demonstrating everywhere. And that seems to become a secondary news story to violence and fires and all of that kind of energy. So we are in the middle of this major historical upheaval and shift of mentality that is going to change the world, I hope. I've hoped this for as long as I've been alive. I never had any attitude towards any person of color in any culture being less than needing full rights as a human being. And can I say that that is how I've been perceived all my life? I cannot. But I can tell you that every individual that I've run into, I've seen as an individual. That's truly how I feel about it. Because you could have pink hair, you could have green hair, you could have blonde hair or gray hair or black hair. You could have any color, skin, whatever. It's all just variations of being human. So we have to learn how to work through these issues. And that's truly where we're at in the world right now. Um, astrologically, which is what I'm going to focus on for this, um, we've got Mars, representative of action and aggression and asserting your independent point of view, your identity. And it is within a few degrees, it's six degrees away from Neptune in Pisces. Pisces is an amazing energy that can flatten all egos and make everything as it wants it to be, as it should be. In its positive energy, it is very much an energy of universal love. In its negative energy, it is delusion. 
the energy of delusion is all about pretty much Neptune moving direct. Uh, when Neptune is direct, it sees things in a beautiful manner. It wants everything to be the best it can be, but it sometimes doesn't see the hardcore physical reality of a situation. When Neptune retrogrades, that energy is much more like Virgo, the opposite sign. It is kind of uh, practical and pragmatic. And so when we have Mars approaching Neptune retrograde, we see this energy culminating in a, an idealized story in a good way. It is a truth that needed to be told. Mars is asserting itself in the, the energy of Pisces. It's saying, no, there is a, a disconnect. And that disconnect is aggravated on some level with the communication of what's going on through a square to Sun Venus in Gemini. So Sun and Venus in Gemini is an analytical energy, but it can also be about possibilities and um, stories, telling a story, you know, communicating a point of view. And being that it's rather, um, it has two sides at least, Mercury can have more than two sides even in uh, how it expresses itself. But we see this discontent, disaffectation with what's going on through a Gemini icon. And Sun in Gemini very much relates to Donald Trump. He has a Sun in Gemini. So his Sun is being approached. It's almost his birthday. I think it's the 16th of June, if I'm not mistaken. But it means that his ego, his identity is very clearly squaring the Mars Neptune conjunction. So, with all of that going on, we've also got the pandemic and coronavirus. And of course, a lot of people are gathering because of what happened and throwing caution to the wind in some instances, not all. I do see a lot of masks, but I still see a lot of masks on people closer than six feet together. And so, what does that mean? That means that we have this secondary story, which amazingly enough, coronavirus is now a secondary story and it is still there it's still working unseen in crowds in the collective so we are seeing a ramping up of the virus with mars joining up with neptune so neptune breaks down the distance and it breaks down the mentality and like i said retrograde acts more like a virgo energy which is hygiene and health and understanding the nature of the disease so we could actually get further right now with Neptune retrograde because remember Mercury in Pisces back in January when all of this was covertly spreading, we didn't even know it was a thing at that point, not really. Um, and so as it was being put out into the world, Mercury was retrograde in Pisces. And so, um, sorry, a little itch there in my head. Um, Mercury in Pisces retrograde was helping us to under to actually not even helping us to understand. It is about understanding, but it was kind of taking away the understanding because Mercury, which is intellectualizing, uh, analyzing, understanding, was pulling back energy, and it didn't really know what was going on or necessarily express what it needed to to protect people. And so when Mercury went direct and then moved on, we started having more of the virus coming out. And so Mercury direct in Pisces was basically spreading it. And so as we get further on in the year and the planets go through Pisces energy, and now we've had the sun already go through there in uh, March, and we, that was really when we were pulling back and starting to lock down. So as this Pisces energy was triggered by Sun and then Mercury, well, Mercury at the time, and then Sun and then Venus went through all these, uh, the Pisces energy, that was really the heat of it. And then now we've got Mars. Mars really is 
truly the heat of it because Mars is a fire sign and a fire planet, excuse me, ruling the fire sign of Aries. So as we have Mars join up with Neptune, there is like a trigger almost that we can't even resist. And that is uh, what's going on with the black storyline in our society, in the world. And so that has risen to the surface. The energies are aligning so that this story gets more traction. And that is Neptune. Neptune is a very um, admirable entity. It is an enormous influence around emotion and around the ideal universally loving scenario. So we have Mars joining Neptune at a time when we are also having the square between the sun and Venus. So sun is ego, Venus is desire. And uh, both at 13 degrees, I'll show you right here, 13 degrees. And interestingly enough, uh, before the podcast, I looked up George Floyd and what was going on at the time in, well, George Floyd at the moment that he was arrested, which online it says it's about a few minutes after eight. And so I just did 8.05 and 8.05 PM in Minneapolis. And then I did the chart for Minneapolis, Minnesota, because that will always be identified with this event. And amazing, like, amazingly enough, of course, there are 360 degrees around the sky of the earth that are associated with the astrological chart. Mars, at the moment of arrest, which is just after 8 p.m. May 25th in Minneapolis, Mars was at eight degrees and let me look it up here, eight degrees and 43 minutes, 8.43 of Pisces. Minneapolis's day of uh, incorporation, so it is February 28th, 1872 at noon, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mars was at eight degrees and 43 minutes. So, or excuse me, 44 minutes. They were literally one minute of astrological time apart for when he got arrested. So he basically represents exactly what was going on in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the time he was arrested as a black man, as an individual. That scenario is linked through action, even in the moment that city was incorporated, that was indelibly the energy of Mars in that city. So um, what does that mean? It means that the energy that he represents is a representative, an accurate representation of what is going on in the city. And it also means that it's in the sign of Pisces, which I get, again, I said is universal love, and universal love means that there is an opportunity for healing. And I, I know I've mentioned this before on other podcasts, but um, I personally have a 16 degree Chiron at, in Pisces in my chart, my natal chart. And so when Neptune, which is at 20 now, and has been going over that Chiron, the wounding in my life, it has been healing a lot of those feelings that I've had and for me, it's in home and family. It's been really not necessarily healing the external, but healing the internal. And so when Neptune transits, it can heal what's going on. So of course, with the Mars where it is, Neptune already went over eight degrees of Mars. So this is something that actually, um, out of sight, Pisces, has been brewing for a while. And not just in a negative way, but definitely as a storyline that will heal in the future. And so, you know, I'm definitely a person who believes in things happening for a reason. And that includes the negative things, even neg apparently negative things can ultimately be a catalyst for change. And I think that's definitely what this situation is with George Floyd is it was a catalyst for change that has been needed. Um, I looked up the slavery history on the internet and August 13th, 1619 is when 20 people were stolen, basically kidnapped 
off the coast of Africa by the Portuguese, a Portuguese ship who took them and brought them, I believe, over to America. I want to say like Haiti or the Dominican Republic, somewhere in there. I, I may have forgotten some of that detail. But basically, they were kidnapped from their families and brought over to America. And that is the definitive start of slavery in America and in the Americas and even in uh, more of Europe and uh, other places like Spain and uh, UK. So it is a very long running, egregious wrong that we've had in our society. And it is being righted. Neptune at n degrees of Pisces is at the end of a cycle. It is the completion of a cycle. And so we will see that. We'll see that when, let's see, I think it's in the early to mid 2030s that Neptune gets out of Pisces, if I'm not mistaken. So um, it's still a little ways away till completion of Neptune being in Pisces. But Neptune moves into Aries right after that. And it's an idealized new way of looking at man and the drive that the male energy in the collective, and that includes women. Women have a male energy. Every one of us has Mars in our charts, not just men. And it's not just a male alone energy. We all express this energy. So uh, we are at the precipice of a major shift. And to top that off, we have, and I just got chills with this, uh, we have a sextile energy, which is a positive cooperative energy between Jupiter, Pluto conjunct at late degrees Capricorn, 24 and 26, and uh, Mars and Neptune. So Pluto is an energy having a Scorpio rising. Pluto wants to rally for justice in its positive energy. Of course, uh, going direct, Pluto can be more of a hidden, mysterious energy. It rules the underworld. It rules dealings that go on behind doors and out in the open, uh, retrograde, it can bring back what we've gone over that was hidden and bring it out into the public eye. Again, Pluto just went retrograde about three or four weeks ago. He's retrograde usually about five months out of the year. And then Jupiter just went retrograde also a few weeks ago. So they are both moving retrograde, going back over their actions of the past, but also the cumulative is a better word, cumulative actions from where we've been in the last year, in the last six months, most specifically. And of course, Jupiter will go retrograde back to, um, I wanna say he retrogrades back to 22 before he goes direct. And he doesn't go direct until September. He goes back to 17, so 17 degrees, of Capricorn, which um, I'd have to look that one up, but I can tell you when he hits 22, that is a significant degree. 22 Capricorn is where um, Pluto squared Uranus. It is also the degree, and that was in 2015, it's also the degree that Saturn and Pluto, Sun and Mercury all met up in Capricorn January 12th and 13th. It happened over the course of those two days over midnight in time zones. So it ran for the course of a couple days. And that degree is a significant because it was also where the node was, the nodes of the moon, the south and north node. And at the time, it was the south node at 22 when they all met up, which is a major world shift, major consciousness shift, major shift of ideology that if we don't get it, we are going to get it enforced. And that's what's happening, is we need the hierarchy to shift. The hierarchy is about equality in the future. It is about Aquarius. And we are moving towards the Aquarian energy. Saturn is already there. Saturn's there now. Saturn's going retrograde, bringing back out um, where we have problems with flattening the hierarchy and making it a level playing field for everyone, for men, women, black, white, you know, Native American, Native, anybody in any culture, 
but also LGBTQ. Um, we are about being in this together on this planet. It is also about the planet that we are working our way towards understanding how to sustain life and how to sustain the planet. So it's an integration of energy, having this Aquarius energy coming in. So this week, we also have a full moon in Sagittarius, which falls at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. So um, currently the south node's at 29 Sag, and the full moon will be at 15. So of course the sun will be at 15 of, um, of Gemini, pardon me, and Venus will be moving on. So we've still got a few days. She'll be about 16 degrees of, um, of Gemini by that time. So actually they may be really close together. We can turn around and get my ephemeris here for you. They're going to be um, running tandem in the sky at that time. I just check my ephemeris in the back. Uh, so let's see here. What day is that? I've got so many things going on here. I'll look it back up. Sorry about that. I know not everybody is listening to this podcast or watching it. They're listening to it as well. So, um, do, 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 do. 3 12 p.m. Moon opposite a sun in Gemini. So 15 degrees and 34 minutes on in the afternoon, and that's Eastern time, 3 12 Eastern, 12 12 Pacific. And I'll see what else is going on. So we yeah, and so pretty much <laughs> earlier in the day, the moon directly opposes Venus. And so it's, you know, Venus is still running close to the sun that day. There is a square to Mars later in the day. And that's actually just moments after the full moon, which is at 344 PM. So I would honestly say that for all intents and purposes, that is pretty much um, an event that is all lumped together in my opinion, because with a half an hour difference between a full moon and the moon squaring um, Mars, that's, that's pretty significant. So let me double check. Yep, 3.44 p.m. Eastern, 12.44 Pacific. And then later on, of course, the moon squares uh, Neptune and Pisces. It is gonna be a significant day. And I would honestly say that lately, I've been noticing that a lot of these events are coming in quicker, sooner than even the exact moment that it, it shows in the ephemeris or that it shows, you know, in astrology charts. So even though it's Friday full moon, I would say given what's going on today is Wednesday. That's only two days away. Um, it's going to be a significant event, probably with Donald Trump, because Again, like I said, his birthday is coming up. He's got a lot of ego attached to this energy right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, we're going to, um, it's going to ramp up. Let's just put it that way. But it's a lunar eclipse, and it is also a um, very powerful energy. So I've got, it, it's education, it's travel, people of other cultures, long distance. So this is a moment also um, where we as a society, as cultures all over the world can come together and understand what's going on. Mars represents the police and having Mars in Pisces, especially with a Neptune right there, is an idealized view of police that is being shattered by the retrograde of Neptune. We have a square to Gemini. Gemini is about, it has some negative connotations in certain aspects. It can be duplicitous. It can lie or tell its own story, which is going on because I think I said that, I'm pretty sure I said it in this podcast, um, that there are events. I've even watched a video of police attacking their own cruiser so that it looked like they were attacked by people who were demonstrating. So. There's information out there that, again, we're getting two stories, maybe even more than two stories, but we are also learning, which is a big territory of Gemini. 
So Gemini is really in it to give information. And so you really have to pay attention, especially given the fact that Pisces can keep information hidden. And then Gemini can tell two different stories. The information is not all here yet. So we're really weeding through what's going on. And it is a time of sitting back and being receptive. That's what uh, Neptune wants us to do is to understand the spiritual, retro, not retribution, um, repercussions of what's going on and why it's coming about the way it is. In an astrological sense, um, it's somewhat divinated, meaning it, it was divinely guided. And part of that is because um, we're bringing in the Gemini Sun North Node energy with what's going on. And so uh, definitely all planets affect everyone involved with this. It's not just, you know, well, I've got a Gemini Sun and I, my side is right. Of course, we will get that on some level, especially um, Mercury in Cancer. It's going to be the Mercury energy as we're in the shadow period right now until, let's say the 17th, I think is when Mercury goes retrograde. But yeah, oh, what do you know? I remembered. <laughs> so yeah, 17th of June, Mercury goes retrograde. And so it's going to be going back over the discourse that we are initiating. This is the shadow period going into Mercury retrograde, the first shadow period. So it's shadow, retrograde, shadow. The first shadow period is when we go over the degrees that we will be retrograding over for the first time. The end retrograde, end of the retrograde and into the next shadow period is where we go over it the final time. So we go over it once, retrograde back over it to understand it and further make changes, redo, and then the planet goes direct and then we finalize and learn the lesson, move forward, um, set it in stone, teach it. You know, it's, it's a final pass that culminates what we were learning during that time. So this is the Mercury and Cancer energy. That's home and family, nurturing, um, feeling safe and secure. Really a domestic policy. We are a cancer country. So it's going to happen over the 4th of July. And because we have the end degrees of this particular retrograde over the 4th of July, and then we also have... Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta get my glasses on here a second. We also have Saturn re-entering Capricorn on the 2nd of July. We have, um, let me see if there's anything else that hits around then. No, I think that's pretty much it. So Saturn and uh, Mercury retrograde, and we have the Sun in Cancer. So it's going to be, well, of course, with the Sun in Cancer, that means that we are going to have opposition by energy to all the Pluto energy, Pluto and, um, well, by then Saturn will be going, like I said, Saturn goes back into Capricorn. So we'll have Saturn and Capricorn, Jupiter and Capricorn and Pluto and Capricorn opposite the sun. And I believe Venus, is Venus going to get there? Or is she still retrograde at that point? I'm talking about the 4th of July energy. Um, there's Venus. Venus is in Gemini. She is all the way back at five degrees, she gets to five degrees when she goes direct in late June on the 24th. And then she is direct um, in Gemini at about six degrees. So I don't think that there is anything. Vesta will also be close to, oh, it's gonna be a war awards. Juno is in um, Libra. And I will tell you, Juno in Libra and Vesta in Cancer close together in square is going to also be an energy on the 4th of July of like words within relationships and around the home life. So we're kind of clashing between what we see as a vision for security and home um, integration with the partnering of either our partner or a business or non-romantic partner it is about balance. It's about how we see the world as a whole 
also and our personal worlds. So Libra is a cooperative energy for the collective. It is the top half of the chart, which is the we, and Cancer is the bottom of the me. So it is a disconnect between the asteroids also coming the 4th of July. It's honestly, um, I was born in the 60s. I was born just before a lot of the civil war, actually not civil war, um, civil unrest that went on in the 60s. And probably I shouldn't even say before. I think I, it was all throughout that time. We had Kennedy assassinated a year before I was born. And then we had a lot of riots going on afterwards, uh, civil and human rights. And so we are in a time with major planets. I mean, Pluto was in Virgo at that time. Pluto and, Vir and uh, Uranus were in Virgo, joined in the 60s. And now Saturn goes into Aquarius, which is Uranus's sign. And Pluto is about to enter Uranus's sign. So it's not surprising that we are having this upheaval with uh, Pluto, with Aquarius energy and Capricorn energy being an earth based practical um, tangible world it is the material signs earth sign virgo capricorn and taurus we're having this uranus is now in another earth sign um, we've got pluto in an earth sign so here we have both of them now in earth signs and you know the people born in the 60s had uranus and pluto in earth signs conjunct so it is very apparent that the combination of Pluto and Aquarius and earth signs and energy like that is going to bring out a shift and change, a real tangible, real world shift in ideology, in ideas, in how our belief systems manifest out in society. Um, trying to see if there's anything else I want to add. This kind of took a little bit more of a turn on this recording of it, but I'm just going to pick up my chart here, what's going on currently, and see if there's anything else I want to add to that. The moon is in Scorpio today. I know um, it's actually one degree off of my natal Neptune and just past my natal moon earlier today, so I am dead in the middle of a very deep um, emotional energy here with what's going on and <clears throat> excuse me again we have um, this visceral energy coming in and I don't want you to just pass it off as like those are just emotions I know that there are some people who are like oh emotions those aren't worthy of anything that's not true um, it can be a more practical side uh, certain factions don't really give any credence to emotions but I can guarantee you there's nothing in this world that didn't go through emotions before it got here. So give yourself a little extra time to process what you're feeling. Um, I have an uncle who's in hospice and he is expected to pass within the next day or so. So it's really um, a deep emotional time. We are all dealing with the issues of life and death and how we want the world to look. So I just want to let you know that we're all going through it, even me. So, uh... hi, welcome to the June third edition of the. Try third time. <laughs>